morning church I hope everyone's doing well it's good to see you on this Sunday morning are there any visitors visiting us today any anyone new ah can you stand up and shout your name please all right Thank you, thank you, Malcolm. He's here analyzing and checking up on us, making sure that we are doing everything right. Yes, sorry. Ah. Ah, hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. Please do feel welcomed, and please do not leave without uh, uh, giving us your information, talking to us. There's Joyce and our lead deacon. Please do make yourself known. We would like to know more about you. Oh, someone else. Good morning. Your name? Monique. Monique. Hey, again, let's give her a welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, a few notices. Firstly, Pastor Stephen is not doing well, so we would ask that you keep him in your prayers. He had a a very high fever, so he's not with us today. So please do keep him and his family in your prayers. The other thing is, as many of you may know, there's been an earthquake that happened in Turkey and Syria. And we want you to know that if any of you feel led to uh, give a donation or to help them out, that we as a church will receive it. So if you, there's, 28,000 people who have died, and they predict that that number may double. So again, if you feel led to help the situation there, um, do, do give, do write on an envelope, this is for Turkey, for Syria, and we will pass that on urgently. Um, as you know, we also have an English class, and many of them are Turkish, uh, and some of our students have been aff 
his fa their family has been affected by this. And we've had people who used to work at the preschool also who were Turkish, their families have been affected by this. So do keep the country of Turkey and Syria in your prayers. I've been told that uh, these beautiful flowers arranged by Christine Rule are for uh, Folu's um, mom. It's an anniversary, 10 years since her passing, so this is in remembrance of her. So that's for Folu's mother's 10th year anniversary since her passing. Please do pray for our sister Beverly. She is today going into a serious knee operation. So please do keep her in her prayers. Uh, we do pray that it goes well without any incident whatsoever. That's Beverly. Today, she's, in, she's uh, in hospital today. The funeral for Marjorie Lewis will be here in the church at 10.30 uh, a.m. this Thursday. Marjorie Lewis's funeral will be here in the church 10.30 a.m. This, this Thursday. Peter Salter, if you remember Peter Salter, our well-loved preacher here and member, long-standing member, he'll be going under, undergoing major surgery tomorrow. So again, please do keep Peter Salter in your prayers. And finally, for those who know uh, Peter Gooch, his wife, Rosemary, passed away on Friday night. So do keep them in your prayers as well. Finally, I want to say something about next Sunday. And I hope you know what I'm going to say, because I've been repeating it, but if you don't, no worries. Next Sunday, the 19th, after our Sunday service, for the members of Edmonton Baptist Church, we will be voting whether to put forward a proposal to the Turkish Fellowship, a license agreement. And this license agreement is about them hiring the sanctuary for their Sunday services. So next Sunday, we'll be voting on whether to give them the license agreement uh, for them to vote, uh, for them to use our, our, our sanctuary service, our sanctuary for their Sunday services. Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied. But I thought it would be helpful to give a little background to it, right? Because we do have the license agreement. We have hard copies if you want them. They're in the foyer. And if you want them digitally, we can email them to you. And if you have asked for it and you have not received it, please do come and talk to me. But what's important for us to understand about this proposal, this agreement that we're going to go forward, is the history of it and why, right? Around, mid, around the middle of last year, Nick Mott, who's an LCM missionary that we're working very closely with, told me about this Turkish fellowship that LCM, London City Mission, are very much in contact with. And this Turkish fellowship is called Emmanuel Fellowship, but they meet in the Green Towers. Their pastor is a man by the name of Talit. And he, Nick came to me and he said, hey, they want, a, they want a bigger space, they need a bigger space, they're growing, they're reaching the Turkish community, and we thought maybe Edmonton Baptist might be involved in that. So, along with Nick, the LCM missionary, I went and I met with Talit, but before I did that, I asked the diaconate. I said to the diaconate, is this something that we're interested in? Is this something that we want to know more about? And they said, yes, go and investigate uh, and see what, what the proposal is, the possibility of it. So I went with Nick Mott and I met Talit, the leader of Emmanuel Fellowship. And I also met a man named Dennis. Now who's Dennis? Dennis is a leader of the Turkish Fellowship at Woodbury Downs. And he's the leader of the European Turkish Christian Network. He has been an OM missionary for the past 10 or 11 years, and thanks to Barbara Govey, here we have the OM magazine, and if you look at the first page, there's a little blurb about him right here, about North London Turkish Fellowship that's growing, and they're about to plant another one soon, so OM says they're doing, he's doing magnificent work, so that's Denny's. And I spoke to them, and he was saying, look, I just don't want, I, I don't want to hire a sanctuary. That's not all we want, because we could if we wanted to. The council has offered them other spaces. What I want is I want a partnership. That's what he said. I want a partnership. I want this Turkish fellowship, Emmanuel Fellowship, to walk alongside a church, a local church. So I was really encouraged by the, what they were proposing. So afterwards, Pastor Stephen and I went to Woodbury Downs to talk to Minister Charles there. 
because that's where the other Turkish fellowship meet. They meet at Woodbury Downs. And he spoke very much, very highly of their relationship. So much that he said that there was going to be a baptism and there was going to be so many people baptized that they didn't have room in the sanctuary. So what they did is they hired buses to go to South End and baptize them there. So they were very, very happy for what's going on there. After which I went to the service of this church, Emmanuel Fellowship, to see what it was all about. It was in Turkish. It was lively. Nick was there. He translated. He let me know what was being told, what was being preached. And I left feeling very, very positive. So I told this to the diaconate. I communicated everything that we've been doing. And they were positive about it. And they said, let's go and have a license agreement. Let's draft one. Let's move this forward. And that's the agreement that you see uh, that we've drafted. That's the one that we propose for you. It's important that we understand that this is the Turkish fellowship, right? That 21% of Edmonton is Turkish. And we have not been able to reach them with the gospel of Christ because language. Language. And what they're doing is they're able to reach them with the good news of Jesus Christ in a way that we cannot. So my hope is with this, is not only will they hire our sanctuary, but that as, as they said, a partnership can be formed, a relationship can be formed, where we have Bible studies together, where we do outreaches together, where we bless one another. So that's why I've been telling you to please do pray about it, Talk to each other. Any concerns that you may have, don't keep it amongst yourselves, but speak to us. Speak to the deacons. Speak to the leaders. Do not keep any concerns that you may have about this amongst yourselves. We really want to seriously consider if this is what God is telling this church to do, to open the doors to this Turkish fellowship. This is not just some fellowship that came out of nowhere. This is a fellowship that has been working with London City Mission, been working with OM, and um, I'm really excited for for the possibility of it. Please do come and see me if things don't make sense, if I was not clear. Um, and please do continue to pray about this decision. Again, Sunday, after the service, all we're gonna do is we're gonna sit and we're gonna vote. There'll be no time for discussions, no time for comments. If you do have any comments or discussions, please do come and see us. And if it demands it, we'll amend the agreement. We have already done so uh, on, on the back of a few comments that were made to us. I hope that's clear. And again, any questions, do come and see me. There are hard copies of the license agreement in the back. And um, yes, do pray about this. That, that'll be next Sunday after our service. Only from members of EBC. Any member of EBC. Right, as they say, that's enough notices for now, isn't it? Let's bring up our call to worship, please. This is from Romans 8, the beautiful, the beautiful final verses of Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand and sing, all creatures of our guarded king.
standing as we now sing our next song, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'm not lost. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my Take your seat. Does everybody know what time it is? Usually what we do after the songs? Birthday books time. Has anyone had a birthday either today, and we'll sing you happy birthday, so be warned. No, no, just kidding. No. Has anyone had a birthday today or in the previous week? I see someone pointing at someone, and then that person left. Has anyone had a birthday? We just want to bless you. We want to give you a gift, and we just want to pray for you. That's all. Oh, come forward. Do come forward. Oh, 
tomorrow. Her name is Helena, her birthday is tomorrow. And she is a deacon of Edmonton Baptist Church, may I ask. Your name and when was your birthday or when is your birthday? My, birth, my name is Dillette and my birthday was Monday. All right. <laughs> Let's give them a, a round of applause. Thank you so much. Please do take something. Right, so let's just bow our heads and pray for these two lovely sisters. And Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the life of Helen and for Lilith, Lord. Uh, thank you because you have given them one more year of life, Lord. We do pray that the year ahead may be a year of blessings and joy, Lord. And may they just continue to grow in the knowledge and in the love of Christ. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Thank you so much. The only way you can know what gifts are in this box is if you come up when it's your birthday. So. But yes, now uh, our children will go to their respective classes. So upper discoverers that way and everyone else this way. And as they head out, let me just, let's just pray for them. Lord, thank you so much for these, uh, these amazing children, Lord, as they grow up. Lord, may they just know more and more about you, Lord. We pray that you speak into their lives, Lord, and that these foundational years may be a preparation for whatever comes their way, Lord. And may they be able to stand on the rock that is your word. Bless the teachers, Lord, and may it be a joyful and Christ-centered time. I pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Right. We will now take up our offering. So if I may ask the offering team to get ready. And we will listen to a, a song as we take up our offering. Just pray. Heavenly Father God, we just want to thank you. We thank you that you woke us up this morning. 
we thank you that you brought us here. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And help us to show that love to others in the way that we behave. Father God, open our hearts to hear what you're saying. And now, Father God, we bless this offering. And we ask that it be used in the building of your kingdom. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Daphne. Can I ask Sister Lynn to lead us now in our intercessory prayers? Let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to bless your holy name for you are a good God. You are a wonderful Savior, the great I am, a giver of everything we seek. Lord, we, can, we have come here this morning because of your love for us. There is so much going on in our world, oh Father God Almighty. But you're still enabling us to come and join together like this to praise and glorify your name, for which we give you praise and we give you thanks. Lord, we remember those who are not able to do the same. The world is full of so many troubles. So many people are going through trials of many kinds because of the love of Jesus. Lord, we pray for those persecuted for your sake, to be protected by your mighty hand, to be provided for by your mighty hand, to be encouraged, Lord, that they may never give up praising and glorifying your name, no matter how hard it is, Lord. Give them the wisdom to know how to keep going, even in the face of these troubles. Lord, when we look around, when we look in, on our television screens, we see so much, oh Lord, especially in the Turkey and the Syrian borders, where the earthquake has destroyed so many lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on our world. Lord, we see so many still trying to, re to, to recover their lost ones in the, in the rubble. We pray, my Lord, that you may reach out and touch the hearts of many, many, many people who have offered to help. Many, many people are spending day and night looking for their loved ones. Many, many people, oh my Lord, who have come from far and wide to give aid to those who have lost everything. Lord, we pray for all those working in those hospitals. Father, give them strength. Encourage them, Lord, to look after these people, oh Lord, with your, with your love, with your goodness. Sometimes we don't even know how to pray, Lord, because it looks so much, so massive, Lord. We don't know how to pray, but you know our hearts, oh Lord. And we pray that you may continue to work with the people of Iraq, um, Iraq, Turkey and Syria, Lord, as they deal with this devastation in their nation. We pray for those leaders, Lord, that they may feel your peace and feel your presence and have wisdom to know how to work through this, oh Lord, as they help their people to get over this devastation, oh Father, in their nation, in their villages, in their communities. We pray for those who have lost their loved ones, Lord, to, to feel your peace and comfort, oh Lord Almighty. Some are still in hospitals, Lord. Walk with them, Father, and heal them, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come to our nation and we see so much going on as well here. We pray for our leaders, Lord, that you may come in and touch the lives of our leaders, provide for them ways of dealing with problems, oh, Father. We pray for those in the House of Parliament who know you, Lord, that they may not give up continuing to encourage others to come to know you, Lord, that they may walk in integrity and in care and take responsibility for the people they represent. We pray for the government to know how to deal with this economic situation that is, is putting people at risk of losing their homes and their possessions, Lord. We pray that our government may find ways of dealing with this economic situation that people may be provided for, my Lord, by your grace and in your love. Father, we give you thanks, for you are the great I am. You are the giver of everything we seek, so we pray your providence in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our church. The church of Christ is in 
a difficult situation at the moment, so many issues coming up, oh my Lord. We pray that these issues may not destroy the fellowship we have with you. We pray, Lord, that you may direct our leaders in all the churches around the world, Lord, that they may stand by the word of God and preach the word of God as it's been given to us from generation to generation, passed on to us. May we know how to pass in to the next generation, Lord, not twist it in our own understanding, but pass it on that the grace of God, the glory of God may shine in our world, in our communities, in our nation, in the hearts of men and women who preach the word of God. Lord, we pray that they may be people of integrity and sincerity, not people who want to, 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 to get their own way, so Lord, in, in twisting the word of God to mean what they want to, to mean, but people who will bring the word of God to help us to walk with you, Lord Jesus, day by day, encouragement, in encouragement and in care. Father, we pray for our own pastors here, Pastor Stephen and his family, your protection and care. For our pastor William and his family, for your protection and care. For our pastor Isaac, for protection and care. For Adolf, for protection and care for their families, Lord, and guidance and wisdom in all the work they do, Lord that this church may be built on the foundation of Christ Jesus with the leaders we have steering it the right way, that all those who help our oh Father, the deacons, the people in the offices and everywhere else in this church, Lord, may be encouraged, may be strengthened, may be given the wisdom to know, Lord, how to guide this church from strength to strength and encourage the community to start to come in and find your peace in this, in this church, Lord, and encourage others around them in their families as well. Lord, we give you thanks, Father, for you have brought us this far, and this, as, as we celebrate the Racial Justice Sunday, Lord, may you encourage us to embrace the love of Christ Jesus and embrace the, difficult, the differences we have and to appreciate one another, Lord, in their differences. And as we fellowship together, Lord, may we fellowship knowing that Christ is the, 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 the foundation in whom we can stand and have the love that you have brought us, O oh Lord Jesus. We give you thanks, Father, for you are a good God. We give you thanks, Lord, because you are your recent savior, the love of, Lord, of, of all nations, Father, Hear our cries and answer our prayers, O Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. So we continue, Lord, to lift our young people to you. Even as they enjoy their break from school this week, O Father, we pray that you may guide them. Keep them away from trouble, Lord, and hold them in your presence and in your care. We give you thanks, Lord, because you are the only one who can give these children a life of peace and a life of safety. We pray, Lord, for those who have recently lost their loved ones. Father, walk with them in your presence, in your peace, and in your comfort. We pray, O oh Lord, that you may continue to guide all those who, are, who have traveled to, 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 to bury their loved ones, and even as they come back, Lord, may you bring them back safely. We think of our sister Nadine, O oh my Lord, that you may walk with her and her family, among many others, O oh Lord. And we now want to lift those who are sick into your hands. Some are waiting for operations. Some are going into hospitals for operations. Some are recovering from operations. Some are suffering from different ailments, oh my Lord. But you know them all. And we pray that you may reach out and touch them and heal them in the way only you can. We remember our sister Beverly as she goes into hospital this morning, Lord, that you may be her healer. You, that all will go well with her, my father, in the procedure that she's going through this morning. We give you thanks, Lord, because you are the great I am. As we listen to your word this morning, Father, may that word reach our hearts and touch us and make us into the people who will touch other people's lives around us with that love that you put in our hearts. Lord, our world, even though our world is hurting from end to end, we know that we can stand strong in your word and continue to be encouraged and continue to encourage others around us. So we can stand with the psalmist, as it says in Psalm 46. Even, the, even in these troubled times, Lord, as the psalmist says in Psalm 46, 
that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with the, their surging, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And so we lift our prayers to you, Lord, because we know you have received them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lynn. Let us stand up and now sing How Deep the Father's Love.
Amen. Please do take your seat. May I invite the deacons and helpers to assist with communion. This is open to everyone who's confessed faith in Christ. And we do have here individual pots, if you feel more comfortable with them. Uh, please do raise your hand, and a deacon will come and give you one of these, if you feel more comfortable uh, with these individual pots. Okay. Come to the sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not to testify that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on heaven's reward, but because in your frailty and sin, you stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on that night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup. After supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please do take the bread when you receive it.
people now distribute the cups, please do retain the cup until everyone's been served so we can all drink together. blood of Christ shed for you. Let's drink and remember.
Amen. I'm going to now invite Michelle, if she can come and do the reading. Good morning, church. I'll be reading from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19, a prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glory, glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Michelle. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have just read an amazing prayer of Paul to the Ephesians and to us, Lord. I ask, Lord, that now you help me to communicate your truth in a clear manner, Lord. May it be your words, Lord, that come out, Lord. And in your mercy, Lord, may there be hearts ready to receive whatever it is you want to give them, Lord. We want you to be the center, Lord. We want you to get the glory. And we want you, Lord, to move powerfully in this church. Be with me now. Amen. Today we continue our journey, our mini journey, through the looking at God's love. And last week, our sister Joycelyn talked about God's love revealed in creation. Sorry, let me just put my timer so I don't go over. And she looked at God's love revealed in creation, looking at Genesis 1, looking at the beauty of that, looking at the goodness of God's creation, and that being his love shown towards us. She looked at marriage and how good marriage is. She looked at our role in taking care of creation. All of that to say, she looked at waterfalls. All of that to say, you are loved. You are loved by God. Evidence? You want evidence of God's love towards you? Is to go out and enjoy the sun to shine on your face. To allow the songs of the birds to delight your ears. To allow the refreshing quality of water to satisfy your thirst. That's evidence of God's love for you. If you think you are not loved by God, all you have to do is appreciate creation and see the beauty in it. Proof of God's love towards you. That's what Sister Joyston was reminding us last week as we started this, this mini-series. Today I want to narrow it down a little bit more. I want to make it more specific, more particular. For you see, God's love is for the whole of creation, the whole of human race. Even so, there is more to God's love than his love towards the world and his love towards creation. There is more to experience of God's love than that love that he has towards his creation. There's more to know about God's love, and that is the love he has for his 
children, for his family. To know the fuller extent of God's love can only be done by his children, those who are in his family, those who kneel before him and call him father. Those are the ones who can experience the full extent of God's love. And that's what our passage says today. That's what it says. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Paul is praying that you, alongside the the Lord's holy people, may have the power to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep the love of Christ is. That is something only the Lord's holy people can do. You. There's a love that God has that can only be experienced and known by the Lord's holy people. Those who have passed from death to life. Those who have given their hearts to God. Those who have been given the right to become child of God. They know this love of Christ. That means that those who have not given their love to Christ cannot experience this type of love. Now, am I excluding anybody? Am I, am I drawing hard lines? Am I saying, no, you're not one of us, you can't? No. The invitation is for all. The invitation is there for everyone. But not everyone accepts it. But those who choose to become part of God's family get to experience a part of God's love that no one else can experience. That's what I want to talk about today. I want you to know that the love that God pours into your heart as a child of God is a special, particular love that he has for you, that he does not have for the rest of the world. I want to make you feel special today because that's what you are, because God loves you in a way he does not love the rest of the world. To go out and let it hit you like a ton of bricks that the God of universe who set things in motion loves you in a special way. It is a fuller love that he has for us, for his church, for his children. So what is my aim today? I want to look at three questions briefly. Does God's love for his church, his children, differ in any way from his love of the world? Let's, does it, is, is there a difference? Well, my answer is yes, but let's look at scripture for that. Is there a difference between the love that God has for the world, his creation, and the love he has for his church? That's the first question. The second question, well, how is it different? If it is, tell me, show me it is different. And lastly, how do we experience this fuller love, this special love? It is not enough to just to know it with your head. One also has to feel it and experience it. Let's tackle the first question. Does God's love for his church, his children, differ in any way from his love for the world? Does it differ? And as we've seen from this passage, yes. But I want to show to you, just not taking my word for it, I want to show you from Scripture where we see this special, particular love in action. It is all throughout his word. He wants us to know this. So when you hear these passages, I want you to think, wow, amazing. Let's begin in the Old Testament. When he chose Israel, his nation, when he set his affections, his love to that nation in a way he did not set his love for other nations. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 to 8. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other people's. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Deuteronomy 10, verses 14 and 15. 
To the Lord your God belongs the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth, and everything in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them, and he chose you, their descendants, above all the nations as it is today. Nothing special about Israel. In fact, it says they were not numerous, they were the, they were the smallest. And we can see how God's love is directed, focused, particular, special to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. Do not misunderstand me. I am not saying that God does not love the world. He loves the world. What I want you to understand is that he has a special love for his chosen ones, for his nation, for his church, for his bride, for his children. And here we see this particular affection, this particular love that he has for the nation of Israel. And we see this with Jesus. In John chapter 13, verse 1, we read, It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. In John 10, he calls his own sheep by name and they follow him. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Greater love has, has no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. John 17, I do not pray for these only, but for all who will believe on me through their word. All who will believe, his own, his sheep, his friends. This is something very precious, powerful, life changing This love of Jesus that he has for his own, for his sheep, for his friends, for his believers, is more than the love he held out for the world, the compassion that fed the hungry and healed the sick and preached good news to the poor. Ephesians 5, verse 25 says, Husband, loves your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The love that Christ has for his bride is special. It's not like the love he has for the world. There's a kind of love that I can have for all men and all women. But there's a particular love I have for my wife, Roberta. I made a vow to her. I made a covenant with her to forsake all others and cling to her for richer, for poorer, in, in sickness and in health. That love that I have for Roberta, a special love, is a reflection that Christ has, that Christ's love has for us. God's love for us, his children's, is different. When you think of his love, when you think of his love, do not think of it just in merely terms of the love he has for the world, because it's more for his bride. Think of the love that takes captive and cleaves and unites and cherishes and defends. Think of a marriage covenant between you and him in which he has sworn by his holiness to love you with a saving, cleansing, and glorifying love. I want you to feel special that God loves you in a way he does not love others. The world, he loves you. His people in a way he does not love others. Again, this invitation is open to everyone who wants to come and feel and experience this special love. But it is for his own. It is for his church. Second question. In which way does God's love for the church differ to that of the world? You may, okay, William, all right. It looks like, you know, he has a certain particular affections for his own. All right, what's the difference, right? The sun rises on the unjust and just alike. It rains on the righteous and unrighteous alike. What's the difference? I really, really want you to grasp how wide and how long and how deep and how high this love is. So what I will do is I will mention, I will state clearly a, a, a statement and the verse that supports it. I will not expand on it because each of them, there's a lot to say. 
every single one of these statements could easily be into one long sermon. I'm just going to state them. I want you to, I'm hoping that this bullet, that this list just goes, washes over you, washes over you. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That's what I'm praying. Let's, let's go into it. God's love for his church differs to that of the world in that he predestined us for adoption into his family. Ephesians 1, verses 5 and 6. 5 and 6. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to the sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. In love, before the foundation of the world, he predestined you to be part of his family. He chose you to be part of his family. He said, I'm going to make William, and I'm going to bring him here to my own. And that's what he did with everyone who believes in his son. God's love for his church differs to that of the world in that Christ died for us so we may live for him. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 to 15. For Christ's love compels us. Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died, Adam. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. God's love for his church differs to that of the world in that he made us spiritually alive. In Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 7, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. Do you know that phrase? Sorry, I said I wasn't going to. Do you know his phrase, that great, that phrase, great love? The only place in the New Testament, Ephesians, Ephesians 2. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. That's you. In the coming ages he'll show his incomparable riches to you. God's love for his church is so great that he has made us fellow heirs with Christ. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. You will inherit the earth. God's love you so much that you will inherit the earth. God's love for his church is so great that he will have us sit at the table when he returns and serve us as though he were the slave and we are the masters. God's love for you is so great that when he comes back, it will be like you're sitting at the table at the, as a master and he will come and serve you. Luke 12, verse 37. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve will make them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. God's love for his church is so great that we will carry out the judgment of angels. 1 Corinthians 6, 3. Do you not know that we will judge angels? What does that mean? I have no idea, but that gets me excited. God's love for his church is so great that he rejoices over us. Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 17. The Lord your God is with you the mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. He, the God of this universe, takes great delight in you, EBC. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. God's love for his church is so great that he will give the church new glorious bodies, just like Jesus' resurrection body. Philippians 3, 21, he will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. You will have a glorious body, EBC. And that is God's love shown towards you. Matthew 13, verse 43, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. We will shine like the sun. Some may be tempted to worship you because of how glorious your body will be, but they will know better and worship the true king. 
God's love for his church is so great that he will grant us to sit with Christ on his throne. We will sit with Christ on his throne. Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Oh, Edmonton Baptist Church, you are loved. You are loved in a way so special, so particular. So when you think of God's love, think of it as this special love that he has for you. All these things, all these promises, all these blessings are because he loves you. Such mountains are God's love, we could never reach the top. Such deep, just the oceans of God's love are so deep, such depth. You can never reach the bottom of it. So why? I want you to think about this. I want you to meditate this, on this. Never forget this, that you are loved. People may say things to you, but God loves you. People may treat you in ways that are not loving at all, but God loves you. People may have rejected you, may have insulted you, but God loves you. Edmonton Baptist Church, I love to say that God loves you. So if you're here today or if you're watching on the internet and you do not know this love, as I said, this is not to exclude anybody. The invitation is there for everyone. So if you have not given your life to Christ, if you have not surrendered and bent the knee to the King of Kings, today can be the day. Today can be the day that will change the rest of your life and eternity. All you have to do is give your life to him and surrender your life to him. So please, if that's any one of you or to anyone in the internet, do not leave this place without talking to me or any of the deacons. Make yourself known. We want to talk to you. Right. I'm aware of time. Final question. How do we feel this love? How can we experience it? How do we get it from the head to here? It's so glorious, but I just don't want to know it factually. I want to live in it. I want to be immersed in it. I want to walk day to day covered in the love of God. How? You mean, yeah, good, good. All right, William. All right, I see it. I see it in the scripture, but I don't feel it. I want to feel it. I want it to be more. I want to swim in it. I want to be immersed in it. I want to be carried by it. If that's you, that is a great desire. That is a great desire. So how does it happen? Well, let's back to our initial passage, Ephesians 3, verses 17 to 19. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So verse 19, he wants us to know the love that surpasses his knowledge. But there seems to be a contradiction. How can I know something if it surpasses his knowledge? Right? Well, it's a different type of knowing. It's a knowing that is experiential. He wants us not to just know it, but to know it. To be satisfied in it, to, to desire it, to delight in it. That's the type of knowing he's talking about, not just a head knowledge. It must be an experience. And this experience will lead you to be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, whatever that means. Filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Oh, I don't know what that means. I have to think about it. But it sounds amazing, and I want it. So how does this knowing the love of Christ come about, right? So you want us to know, you want us to experience. How, how does it come about? Well, he says, rooted and established in love, right? And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have the power to grasp. So he wants us to be rooted and established in love and have the power to grasp the ungraspable. Well, how? How can I be rooted and grounded in love? Well, Previous verses, verse 16. 
I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. In the end, my brothers and sisters, it is a work of the Holy Spirit. When we are strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, in our inner being, Christ will dwell in our hearts by faith. Paul puts it in other words in Romans 5.5, 5, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Again, it is an act of the Holy Spirit. It is a knowing, it is treasuring the love and praying, Lord, pour your love. And that is why Paul prays this. He's praying this for the Ephesians. He's saying, oh, I pray that you may experience this, this unknowable love, so grand, so majestic, that we cannot find adequate words to describe it. Do you pray this? Do you get up in the morning and say, Lord, fill me with your love? Pour your love through your Holy Spirit in me? Let's, let us not go a single day without being one of the first prayers we do. God, be with me this day, and I pray that you pour out your love in my heart. I want to feel it. I want to experience it. I want to sense it. This experience varies from time to time, from person to person. That is why Paul is praying it. And that's why we should pray it. Does God's love for his church differ in any way to that love he has for the world? Yes. In what ways? Well, he chose us. He predestined us. He made us spiritually alive. He died for us so that we may live for him. We are now co-heirs with Christ. We will judge angels. He sings over us. And oh, so many more ways is different. And how do we experience this love? Well, two things. Paul here is praying for two things to happen in order for us to feel this experience of Christ's love. First, we fill our minds, our thoughts, with the truth of Christ and his demonstration of love towards us. We read his word. We read what he did. We read what he says. And we think, we think, we meditate. We keep it. We memorize it. Then we pray. I've tried to show you from the scripture the truth of Christ's love for you this morning. And I want to end by praying for you. If you're in a tough time, if you're in a low time, and you do not feel this type of love, you are in a, a, an experience, a period where you cannot experience this type of love in this, in this way, I, I'm going to pray for you now. I just hope that you think of these things and you take your time to think of these things and just be amazed by this, this amazing love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are just amazed, Lord, in awe of all these beautiful ways that you show your love towards your church, Lord. To think that we'll be sitting on your throne with you, Lord. Us. Lord, what amazing love. And I want to pray now, Heavenly Father, for those who are your children, Lord, and who are not at this moment feeling or experiencing your love, Lord. They may feel that you're away, that you're distant. And I pray what Paul prayed, Lord, that your Holy Spirit outpours your love into their hearts. So whatever the enemy may bring, they will be able to say, but I am loved by God. Not only do I know this, but I experience it. I feel it. I walk in it. I'm immersed in it, Lord. May we never be far away from your love, Lord. Keep us. Keep us. And let us feel, experience your love and glorify you in all that we do. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Let us now stand. Amen. Let us just now stand for our final song, and then we may be on our ways after I give the blessing. I stand amazed in the presence. I 
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And may he lift up his countenance and give you peace. And may you be able to this week walk in the love of God and experience and feel the love of God. Amen. 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 God be with you.